And Sky 10 back over a scene today of a disturbing discovery in the water. We talked about this yesterday. Thousands of dead fish in Biscayne Bay. Our own Louis Aguirre has been covering this story. And he's joining us live right now with an update from FIU's North Campus in North Miami. What's happening out there now, Louis? Well, let me first give you the update of what we observed this morning on, on Biscayne Bay. Uh, a, f a far less number of dead fish, so that is the upside, but there's still dead fish uh, littering the bay from as far north as Keystone Marina, 135th Street, all the way south to the AAA, to the American Airlines Arena. Right now we're at FIU's North Campus. There's a team of researchers from the Environmental Institute for Research right here at FIU. They are departing. This is a robot that you see behind me. They're going to be launching that robot on that boat back there. They're going to be going to the epicenter of what appears to be ground zero for this fish kill, which is the bay just uh, outside of Morningside Park. Uh, so we saw tons of video that you've been sending us since Monday of the thousands and thousands of fish that have been washing up on the shore, uh, creating a very toxic, a very smelly situation on Biscayne Bay. We just got our first report back from Miami water keepers that do show a high level of bacteria, enterococci bacteria in the waters outside of Morningside and Biscayne Bay, so it's not safe to swim there. But again, the big mystery is why is this happening? Why is this happening? Researchers from across the state are very alarmed. We have Durham on this. We have NOAA on this. We have Miami Water Keepers on this. We have state officials, city officials, and now FIU is getting on board. And the researchers here are very alarmed. They say this is an emergency. It's an emergency. The bay is not in a, in, in a good place right now. Uh, it's a warning sign. So we should take this as, as a warning sign uh, more than anything else. You know, so. Uh, people have been predicting that things like this could happen. I think it's time for us to sit at the table and say, okay, let's do something about it. So let's do something about it. The big question is, what can we do? Well, we can be informed, number one, but we, we don't have the political will to move this forward. That's been the problem. We've known the situation in Biscayne Bay for a good many years, but we haven't taken the action necessary. Number one being the amount of nutrients that are seeping into the bay. And there are many contributing factors. Number one, fertilizer runoff. The city of Miami just recently, back in March, passed the most aggressive anti-fertilizer ordinance in the county, which means that residents are not permitted to use fertilizer in the summer months. Why? because we have too much rain and all the rain does is run that fertilizer into the bodies of water that seep into the bay. Those nutrients are poisonous to Biscayne Bay. Plastic pollution, we're using way too much plastic. We have to cut back on our use of single use plastic. Our sewage system needs to be updated urgently. We have too many sewage spills. Our septic tanks are leaking. All of this creating a perfect storm, including the storm drain runoff. All that storm drain, all that storm water that is building up on the streets of Miami, that is picking up all the dirt, all of the toxic chemicals, and dumping that right back into the bay. This is the problem that needs to be addressed. But again, the time is not for pointing fingers. The time is for A, finding out what exactly is causing this, and the time is for all of us to come together as a community to address this problem once and for all and save Biscayne Bay. Christy and Janice, back to you. And it's certainly worth saving for sure. It's a, it's a terrible situation out there. Thank you, Louie, for uh, shedding some light on this.